Hello, we're the Summerfields, and we're the pastors of Word of God Fellowship Church. That's right, our whole family is part of the pastoral Amen. staff. Yes. We're excited about being able to minister to you by television, but also we love to minister to you in person. We have all kinds of things available for children, adults, married people, single people, divorced people, separated, widowed, transitioned, whatever your situation is. We've got something for you at Word of God Fellowship Church. We're a family-style ministry. We're all in ministry together. We want to be a blessing to you. We'd love to see you real soon, and stay tuned for the program. God bless you. Are you looking for more than just a traditional church service? Come be part of our global ministry with a family feel. We welcome you and your family to come join us at Word of God Fellowship, 3000 Rock Quarry Road. Grow your marriage bond through our strong marriage ministry. Enjoy lots of wholesome activities with our energetic, soaring singles ministry. We also have a thriving senior saints community, just waiting for new people like you. And we have sign language interpreters for the hearing impaired. As a family-oriented church, we offer an excellent children's ministry known as our Kingdom's Crew, which serves our infants, adolescents, and teens. Here at Word of God Fellowship, we highlight the fine arts through our band, performance arts, and choir ministries for all ages. Expand your vision with annual national conferences that will lift you up to a higher level. Enjoy our live musical events and relax with like-minded people in a Christian environment. Join us in expressing our love through our health programs, food pantry, prison ministry, and other outreach programs. We look forward to seeing you with your hands lifted during our dynamic time of praise and worship beginning every Sunday morning at 1030, every Tuesday, and first and third Friday at 7 p.m. Word of God Fellowship, the place of worship for you. Hello, God bless you. Thanks for watching the program. I got a special announcement that can impact your life. Starting March the 8th, for you early risers, we've determined that you want to do things early. We're starting an early bird express service designed to last about an hour and 15 or 20 minutes with a powerful praise and worship, a powerful word of God to impact your life and then allow you to get out, be with your family, open your business, go to the golf course, NC State, Carolina Duke basketball games, whatever you do the rest of the day. Join us starting March the 8th at 8.30 for our Early Bird Express Worship Service. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Let me tell you, baby, when you got the devil coming against you and demons trying to tear your family up and the devil trying to rob your finances and trying to block your miracle, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the supernatural presence of God in your life so you can defeat that devil and tell him to go back to hell and get his hands off your money. Off your body, off your marriage, off your children, off whatever he's got his hands on. In Jesus' name. When you got the Holy Ghost and the name of Jesus, you got the team that you need for the devil to have to back up, back down, and back out of your life. Oh, yes, you do. So we got to get back to this place, you know, of kingdom salvation. God spoke to me, and I heard him yesterday about this because we 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 we've been we've been we're doing we're doing okay, and some of us are some of us are living holy, some of us are you know living holy for God, but you know we really need some power because you know what I'm telling you, the devil gonna come to your mind, he gonna try to tell you to go back and smoke cigarettes, go back and and, and, and smoke some weed, hit some crack, and have have some sex fun. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, man, the power, supernatural power, got to resist and say, oh, that's, oh, 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 devil, I know that's you talking. That's, that, 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 that's from hell, the pits of hell. You, be, you, you better go to somebody else's house. This is the wrong body for you to be talking. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God lives in this holy body. And I'm holy like God is holy. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, be ye holy for I am holy. Romans 12, 1, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Come on, somebody, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 2 Corinthians chapter, I believe, 7 and 1. Therefore, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfect holiness in the fear of God. Give God a hand clap for holiness being perfected in the fear of God. Man, when you got the Holy Ghost in your life, thoughts might come, but you, you arrest that stuff right away. Devil, you're talking to the wrong brain right now. 
Ain't no matter what, I'm going to commit no sex sin. I'm living holy. I'm loving God. I'm serving God. You better shut up and get out of my mind. You got the wrong head. You might as well get on out of this one because this ain't the right place to be talking. Because you got power. You got supernatural God power. You have power to resist the devil. And he has to flee according to James chapter 4. I believe verse 7 and 8. Resist the devil. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil. And he's got to flee. 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 The Greek word is fuego. It means run in terror. Ooh. Hey. Hey. How many of y'all know you can get the devil to run in terror? You resist on the word of God. Say devil. The word says I'm holy man. The word says I'm healed. So you might as well get on off of me with this symptom you got right now. You might as well get on off of me because I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. 1 Peter 2.24, with his stripes I was healed. Isaiah 53 and 5, with his stripes I am healed. Matthew 8.17, come on, Jesus himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. So you're talking to the wrong person. I'm healed by the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, so you might as well stop messing with me. But you don't have the Holy Ghost, man. You don't have nothing supernatural in you to tell you to, 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 to basically you know, disagree with the things that are happening. And you have no eternal supernatural ability to withstand and know your enemy. See, the Holy Ghost helps you discern when it's a devil messing with you. First Peter chapter 5, I think verse 8 says, be sober. Somebody say sober. Be vigilant, watchful. For your adversary, your enemy, your opponent, the devil is like, but he isn't really, but he's like a roaring lion who goes around trying to see who he can devour. Then he says, whom resist, steadfast in the faith. You can't resist the devil steadfast in the faith without the Holy Ghost in you. Anyway, let's go back to chapter 2. Let's see what happens when the first people of God got the Holy Ghost. Let's, let's, let, let's go back and see what we're supposed to experience to be like the church when it first opened. See, now the church is open and operationally and religions are you know, basically operating and, and different types of theologies are going on and, and, and church programs are going on. But, you know, how many people are really operating like the church started? You got to understand there's been some dilution going on. There's a whole lot of versions of something that was original in the beginning. And we got to be careful not to get caught up in what's popular. Careful to get caught up in what it seems like the majority are doing. We got a whole lot of ground, even if we're the minority. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you really look at the numbers and the equation that Jesus used in Matthew chapter 7 when he taught about how many were going to find life and make it in the kingdom and how many were not, comparatively, there's a huge differential there. He says in Matthew 7, I believe in verse 13, seek you to enter in at the straight gate. Somebody say straight gate. He said, because broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to destruction and many big crowds there be that go in thereat. But he says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. Now you stuff that in your pocket, go home and study it and discern it and run references and see doesn't that mean that most folk are not going to make it in the kingdom of God. I know you don't want to, but give God a hand clap for the yeah. truth anyhow. Most folk are not going to make it. There are more folk in churches, in church builders, in church programs that are not going to make it than that are. And I know you don't want to amen that because you'd love to be with the crowd and love to have the crowd, love to think that most people are going to make it. But the Bible doesn't say that. The word of God is true, and everything else is a liar if it's different. And you shall know the truth, John 8, 32, Jesus' teachings also. And the truth you know will make you free. If you want to be free from the devil's grips and from the woes and throes of life and from inferiority complexes and all the crazy stuff that's trying to hold you back in life, you got to get free from the word of God. The truth of God's word is the only thing that can make you free so you're not in bondage and you're not some victim of, of life and victim of difficulties and victim of situations. You need the truth that's in God's word to be made free. Free in your mind, first of all. If your mind's not free, you are trapped. Because as you think, Proverbs 23, 7 says, so are you. As a man think of it as hard, so is it. So you got to get your mind renewed every day. 
My renewal yesterday won't help you today, and my renewal today will not help you tomorrow. Every day you got to get into that word, get into that book, and meditate in the word of God day and night, like Psalm 1 talks about, and then you'll make your way prosperous, and you'll have good success. Well, jo Joshua 1, Psalm 1, everything you touch will prosper. Both of them are saying the same thing. Meditate in the word day and night. Expose yourself to the word of God every day, every night. That's how you renew your mind. Because your mind will be contaminated every day. In 24 hours, you have the ability intellectually to think about 600,000 plus thoughts. Normal intellect can process around 600,000 thoughts every 24 hours. Can you imagine how many times the devil wants to be some of those thoughts? So you got to constantly cleanse this thing every day with the Word of God. Have time to, with God, spend time reading the Word of God, spend time listening to the Word of God on CDs or DVDs or something, and cleanse your mind because something got in there during the day yesterday. Something got in there to corrupt you. Something got in there to make you feel, you know, doubt. Fear, inferiority, confusion, worry, anxiety, pity. Something got in there to cross your wires up. And if you don't renew, because there's a lot of subconscious thoughts you have that you don't even know you've thought. Because I let 600,000 plus. Some are conscious, some are subconscious, some you initiate, some just come in there because the devil's trying to invade. You could, be, you could be thinking a whole lot of nice, pleasant things, and all of a sudden, here comes some junk. You can be happy and, 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 and singing praise songs. All, all of a sudden, here comes some worry. Here comes some doubt, some fear. Hey, where, where, where did that come from? Because the devil snuck in there and stuck something negative in there so he can poison you and take control of your mind. So you got to renew this thing every day. Give God a praise time for my renewal. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 says, But be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. I quoted Romans 12 earlier about holiness in, in verse 1, but verse 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, every vain thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You got to control what happens in your mind, baby. And the more, let me tell you, and the more words you hear on a regular basis, that's why you need teaching. You need a teaching atmosphere, a teaching church, because the teaching allows you to accumulate knowledge. Preaching inspires you, and there's nothing wrong with it, and it helps your emotions to get some exercise, but you can't learn without being taught. And if you don't learn, you can't know what you need to know to defeat the devil and whatever else is trying to destroy you. Give God a hand clap for learning God's word. Jesus said this when he taught this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, and Luke chapter 4, verse 4. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, Paul, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you got to be around the church as often as possible if you're going to learn every word. Amen. And in that Matthew 4 and Luke 4, Jesus was tempted by the devil. He had fasted 40 days, and the devil came to him to try to get him to, 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 to uh, submit to him. And every time he says something to Jesus, to tempt him, Jesus said, it is written. He quoted the word. To walk in kingdom salvation, you got to know the word of God. you got to be able to quote that thing to yourself, to the devil, to whatever else is coming against you. Yeah. If the boogeyman is necessary, yeah. if the hoochie-coochies come, you got to be able to quote the word. Yeah. You can't be talking about blah, 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 blah. You know, you better, hey, it's written. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yeah. It's written, Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed me. Yeah. It's written, Jeremiah 30, 17. He will restore my health and heal my wounds. When the devil comes against your body, you better quote the word of God. Because that's the only thing that makes him shut up and back up and get out of your face and get off your body. If he don't hear the word of God, he keeps on stalking. But he cannot go over God's word. So in kingdom salvation, you must be a word taught and a word believing and a word speaking and a word living person. That's why it takes sessions like this teaching. Now, I don't know if they loaded this outline or not. It's actually something I've done first part years ago, almost 10 years ago. But seven phases of kingdom salvation, I don't know if they, you can check to see if it's in the outline uh, uh, section of, your, of our website. 
but someone knew about it. I don't know if they did or not, but somebody might be able to do it even while I'm teaching, but it's available. It should have been available, but it may be because it's, kind of, it's probably got a lot of dust on it. This, I, was, I taught this about 10 years ago. So that's pretty, you know, you know. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Thank you. I appreciate that. Praise the Lord for it. But if not, we'll get it to you where you can study because we want these messages and these teachings to be available to you. So in your, you know, electronic device time of you can, you know, instead of looking at just videos and stuff, you can learn the word. Amen. So we try to put these outlines where you can ac access them and teach yourself when I'm not teaching you. Amen. So I, I'm the catalyst for the teaching of the word of God, but you are the continuation of it. Yes. Give God a hand clap. You're the continuation. You should be teaching yourself every day. Okay, so, so back over to Acts 2 uh, on the day of Pentecost. I've kind of stretched away from it, but let's go back there. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all one accord. This is amazing what one accord can take you to in one place. Verse 2, please. And suddenly, oh, all, oh, all of a sudden, somebody say suddenly. suddenly. Oh, suddenly uh, there come a sound, a sound from heaven as it sounded like a rushing, you know, like a, you know, whatever, a rushing mighty which is really a mighty wind is, you know, that's pretty strong. Yeah. That, that might be 75, 80 miles an hour. You know, 10 mile an hour wind is not a mighty wind. Mighty wind, you're getting up into about, you're getting up into double figures. You're getting up into, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 miles an hour. I don't know how many miles an hour this one was, but it was mighty. Yeah. And, you know, there was a sound that sounded like a rushing mighty wind. It didn't say it was. It said it sounded like it. And then, and, then, and then, and it filled the whole house. The sound of a 70, 80 mile an hour wind filled all the house where they were. And then there appeared unto them, they saw something. Cloven tongues like fire. They saw some tongues. You know, say, yeah. They saw some tongues floating in the air that looked like flames. Somebody say weird. And, and these tongues that looked like fire sat on them and it didn't burn them up. It sat upon each of them. Can we go back, please? It sat upon each of them. Give, give me verse 3, please. It sat upon each of them, I think. So this, can you imagine? First of all, you can't imagine seeing tongues in there let alone tongues that look like fire. And then all of a sudden, they fall on you. Ain't, ain't too many folk going to want the Holy Ghost. They got to do that. <laughs> Let's be honest. Ain't too many folk going to be hanging around trying to get no Holy Ghost if they got to deal with fire on their head. Because, you know, we're natural and carnally, you know, driven. So we, we look at things not in a spiritual way, but in a carnal way. Man, 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 I don't know about the fire thing, man. You know, I want the Holy Ghost and I want power and I want powerful miracles. I don't know about that fire thing on the head, man. Can I wear a helmet when it comes? <laughs> if you want to, but I mean, it ain't going to burn you up. It didn't burn them up. Right. Just sat on them. And let's see what happens. Uh, let's see what the results were. Verse 4 now. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm trying to figure out wind. Tongues, fire, you know, which lets us know that the emphasis wasn't on the wind and the tongues and the fire. So you can't get preoccupied with that. But the emphasis is on actually getting filled with the Holy Ghost. So sometimes you got to ignore stuff going on around you. Because if you come to the altar to be filled with the Holy Ghost and you hear voices of people talking and you're watching who's looking at you and all these things get your attention, now you are preoccupied with what's going on and you can't be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't focus on no external stuff. This is what I see in this for the church today. Don't focus on nothing external, nothing outside of your heart and your mind where the Spirit of God is filling you. Get your, get your attention off everything around you. But the name of Jesus and the promise of God's word, say amen. amen. That way you'll be focused on the right thing. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. But notice this. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And then the Holy Ghost began to speak through them. No, that's not correct. Somebody said yes. 
That's not correct. But if you're not careful, you won't notice that, and you'll read it and think the Holy Ghost does the speaking. And you'll stand there when you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and wait for the Holy Ghost to talk. And he's not going to say nothing for you. They began to speak. They are the people. Jesus' mother and the rest of them, 120, they began to open their mouth. You can't speak without opening your mouth. So the first thing you got to do to get filled with the Holy Ghost is believe and trust the name of Jesus and believe that God is filling you, and then you got to open your mouth. And you got to say what comes out. Well, pastor, how do I know it's going to come out? You don't know. Just say whatever comes. Because it's not going to be English because you're not going to speak in the language that you normally speak. Because the Holy Ghost came and they began to speak. The people, they began to speak with other tongues. Tongues comes from the Greek word glossa. It means dialects or languages other than what they normally spoke. So, you know, for example. If you'd like to receive a copy of today's message, please send a gift of $15 or more to the address on the screen. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Summerfield, and I'm so glad I've got the chance to talk to you. You know what? I've got an opportunity that I don't think you can pass up. I don't know how many of you are married and, uh, or know someone that is married that's experiencing some difficulties and problems. Well, it's not unusual because marriage is, is a covenant, it's a commitment, and it's work. My wife and I have been married for 37 years, and we have really experienced the blessings of God and the joy that marriage can give you. But we've learned a lot of things in those 37 years and talked to a lot of people, counseled a lot of people, and we found that most of the reasons why people end up in divorce are all the same no matter what race they are, no matter what country they live in. So it's almost the same everywhere. I've got an opportunity. I've got a package for you available to you. I've got a series entitled Living in God's Favor and, and Prosperity. Marriage is supposed to be prosperous and marriage is supposed to have the favor of God if you really, really live the right way in marriage and practice the right principles. So I got a series entitled, you know, Living in God's Favor and Prosperity available on DVD or CD your choice. And along with that, we're packaging the book, Why Relationships and Families Fail. A lot of people end up in divorce court. Most of the reasons are the same. And if you can find out why it happens, there's a real good possibility you can avoid it. Well, why do you want to avoid divorce courts? Because it's costly. In fact, one of the institutes, Institute of American Values has determined today that $112 billion are spent annually on divorce by Americans in this country. $112 billion. You don't want to be part of that statistic. You, listen, it's, there's so much involved in expense and so much involved in the disruptions of the family, so many things the children go through psychologically. We can save that if you can really read this book, Why Relationships and Families Fail, and in the same package, get Living in God's Favor and Prosperity. For $37.40, I believe God wants you to have the desires of your heart. And I believe deep down inside you desire a successful marriage and a prosperous family. And Psalm 37 verse 4 talks about God wants to give you the desires of your heart. So that's why I came up with $37.40. Small amount to pay for saving hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime for your husband, wife, and your family. So invest now. The offer is limited, so you need to call now. $37.40 to save yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars later and thousands of heartaches and thousands of headaches and thousands of dysfunctional behaviors possibly by your children because of divorce. You can save that marriage if you invest right now. Call that number and we'll get this information to you as quick as possible. God bless you. Thanks for the chance to be a blessing to you. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Beyond measure. I'm going to show you how great I am. This kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. I'm going to show you how great I am. And nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. 
Because if you're willing to go through all the battling you got to go through to get to where you want to get, who's got the right to stop you? I mean, maybe some of you guys got something you never finished, something you really want to do, something you never said to someone, something. And you're told no, even after you pay your dues, who's got the right to tell you that? Who? Nobody. It's your right to listen to your gut, and ain't nobody's right to say no. Not to earn your right to be what you want to be and do what you want to do. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hit. And not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that, and that ain't you. You're better than that. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Beyond measure. I'm going to show you how great I am. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Summerfield, founder of Word of God Christian Academy in Raleigh, North Carolina, in our 20th year. You know, we've had 20 graduating classes, and 78% of our graduates have gotten either academic or athletic scholarship. We've had three, we've had three Gates Millennium Scholars. We had the first student in North Carolina to win the NASA award for research in the ozone layer and skin cancer, an eighth grader in our school. And you know, we've had so many students that have done some great things. Our arts and our music and fine arts department is tremendous. We've had uh, uh, Tremaine Williams who graduated, who's a Grammy award winning recording en engineer in, 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 in recording industry. And so a Grammy award is huge. And our, our arts, our fine arts and music department is growing tremendously. Band, and, and, uh, beginning, intermediate, advanced and just tremendous things. In fact, our athletic program is strong. We had the number one draft player picked in the NBA in 2010, John Wall, with the Washington, Wiz Washington Wizards. He led them in the playoffs this year. And so things are happening here tremendous, and we are expanding. We got international students here from several countries. That program is growing and getting stronger. So a lot of diversity here at Word of God, uh, Word of God Christian Academy. We've got honors and AP courses. We're also tracking courses in that are gonna get college credit for students to take those classes. So we're doing exciting things. There's a phone number there. We want to give you a tour. My heart is in education. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My background is I've taught in the public schools, elementary, secondary. I taught at Campbell University and Shaw University. So my heart is in education and I'm in it to stay. We want to be a blessing to you. Call the number, schedule a tour, let us be a help to you and your child at Word of God Christian Academy where great things are happening and children are excelling. God bless you. Thank you, Covenant Partners, for all your support.